Great, thanks. This is a joint session of the uh, joint meeting of the House and Senate Government Operations Committees. And we thought that it made sense for us to meet jointly to hear the, um, to take less time from the uh, commissioner to walk through the um, proposal for the agency of public safety. Once we get, once we have walked through it and everybody's had a chance to kind of ask the technical questions, then we will um, meet in our separate um, committees and take testimony from, from people. And hopefully we will be um, able to start this bill in the Senate, that, that is our plan, and then be able to send it over to the House. But um, it made sense for all of us to hear the walkthrough at the same time. So um, Representative Copenhans, is, is there anything else you wanna add? Well, I just wanna say thank you for um, facilitating this meeting. Uh, I, I like that we're being efficient with our time um, and the time of the folks who are with us here today. So we look forward to hearing the bill presentation. Thanks, and by the time it becomes a bill, it might be very different anyway, but we don't know about that. But So are you done on the floor, House members? You are, okay. All right, so with that, um, I guess I, it is February uh, 17th. I did not say that to begin with, and we are live. Um, we will, what well, our plan is today is then to have the commissioner, and um, I think it is not, the bill draft is not yet put in the form that we're used to seeing. Um, it's, uh, I think, think it's um, being presented to us by the commissioner. <laughs> we'll look at that. And I would remind people, and um, this may be different than the way you run your committees, but we do not use chat in our committees. The only, the only reason that we use chat is if something is referred to and there's a link to that document, Gail will post that. But other than that, we don't allow ch chat to be used because we uh, think of it as a sidebar conversation. And if we were in our committee rooms, we would ask people to leave and go to the hallway or the cafeteria and have their conversation. So we do the same thing here. Is that okay? All right. So with that, um, let's... Um, we just jump right into it with the commissioner and we apologize for this being so late. Um, we had a presentation by Commissioner Levine to the all Senate. And my understanding was that it would be from 1.30 to two and that we could meet at two, but clearly it went a little longer. You know how senators are, they like to keep talking and asking questions. So it went a little longer than expected. So with that, Commissioner, would you like to join us and um, start us on a um, <clears throat> as much of a walkthrough as you can do here, outlining where we're going and looking at the bill? And I understand, I realize it's 68 pages, but if we can do that, that would be great. Um, and if if there are technical questions as we go through, um, then what I would ask is if people would just speak up. And the reason for that is because given my <clears throat> um, technical setup here, I can't both see people and see the, the bill itself. So um, if you have a, a question that you need to ask the commissioner as we go through, just please um, identify yourself. Okay. Is that okay? Okay, great. So with that commissioner. Good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair and uh, committee members. Thank you very much for, uh, for doing this together. It does, uh, it does help with the, the current pace of operations to be able to go through things uh, fewer times. So I very much appreciate that. Um, what is uh, before you is a draft 
uh, of a bill that flows from the general constructs that we've presented to you that were outlined both in a modernization plan that we've been talking about since uh, January of 2020 and the uh, governor's uh, executive order that was issued earlier this year. Um, the structure of the bill it used a template that was one that was used previously by the General Assembly in uh, creating an iterative uh, structure for the evolution of an agency. Excuse um, me, Commissioner, I'm going to interrupt you for one second. I forgot that we would poll people to see if they wanted it to be um, put on the screen for all of us to see. So I'm looking here for um, if people would rather have it put on the screen for uh, us. It, it's on our, it's at least it's on our website on yeah. SenateGovOps, so we could just pull it up on, so we don't have to. Right, well, that, that's my question. The screen. Does anybody, is there anybody here who would prefer it being on, pulled up on the screen? I'm seeing a lot of shaking of heads, so okay, good. Sorry about that, go ahead. So the structure of the bill is uh, was taken from a prior um, iterative agency uh, bill that uh, has been used previously. There are probably a number of different ways that this could be structured, but uh, um, the, th that was the most recent version that was uh, that was available. Um, there, as was uh, noted, I think. Uh, possibly before we uh, started, there was a quick sidebar about it being uh, repetitive in nature and the language. Um, that is absolutely true. Um, the repetitive nature of the language is uh, uses that prior construct that's been used to uh, make alterations uh, as time passes. So there's a section uh, about um, a particular structure of a, a Department of Law Enforcement, for example, and then there's another version of that that comes later. Um, in the bill that uh, reflects the changes that would occur based on a point in time. So that's, that's why uh, there are repetitive components. Um, uh, I'll probably, uh, un unless it is helpful to the committees, I'll, I'll spare you the, um, uh, the, the in-depth dive on the history of how we got here, except to say that uh, this is a component of our overall modernization strategy that we've been talking about, which uh, has a variety of um, goals, um, including uh, the better organizing the state's public safety assets, in part to provide better public safety supports to communities and public safety organizations statewide. Um, the uh, the same iterative approach is taken here in this bill draft as was uh, contemplated in the executive order um, that this is a step-by-step a, a -step, uh, approach to, to creating an agency. So it would create the agency itself and pivot from a department. Um, it would then uh, take the, uh, the operations of the Vermont Police Academy and connect those to the agency while maintaining the independence of the Criminal Justice Council itself. So uh, essentially providing the support of the larger um, agency construct to the operations of that council and simultaneously providing administrative and budgetary support uh, to the academy, an area that has been uh, under-resourced uh, in recent years. Um, it would then uh, do much the same with the operations of 911. Again, um, reflecting back to uh, two years ago when the, the legislature instructed the Secretary of Administration to determine where the 911 uh, board should exist in the executive branch. Um, this is uh, in part an outgrowth of that work that was assigned to the Secretary of, of Administration. Again, with the same general uh, construct in play that the the support of the agency, and in this case, the uh, the technical combination of the, the talent from the 911 team, uh, our radio technology services unit, and the public safety answering points that are run by the state uh, could come together uh, in one communications unit and leverage those assets uh, in better fashion while maintaining the independence of the 911 board. Uh, and then finally, uh, within the creation of the Department of Law Enforcement, 
uh, keep the, the, the first and, and only uh, piece of the puzzle to move in, in this, uh, as drafted here, uh, would be the enforcement components of the Department of Motor Vehicles, as we described when we were talking about the executive order. We've added language uh, here to, um, uh, at least as drafted, memorialize that uh, folks who are assigned to the, the two initial divisions, the Vermont State Police and the Division of Motor Vehicle Enforcement, would not be able to be transferred between divisions without a specific request on the part of the employee and then consent by both the commissioner and the secretary of the agency. So uh, we tried to address some of the things that came up in earlier testimony. So that is the, the 80,000 foot view and I'm, I'm happy to walk through the 68 pages, but in a nutshell, um, each component of what's uh, memorialized in those 68 pages either addresses one of those three initial moves that's contemplated in the bill as drafted uh, under the new agency. And, um, and uh, uh, the other cross section of work that's done here is uh, it addresses the places where um, the word department needs to be substituted, um, commissioner needs to be substituted with secretary, uh, a lot of administrative um, work in the background um, that flows from some groundwork we did last January. If you go back to the modernization strategy that we put forward, there is an addendum at the end of that that outlines a variety of the places where statutory alterations would be necessary to create the agency. And a lot of the work that uh, was outlined there has been embedded into this uh, initial draft of the 68 page uh, agency bill. So that's the high level overview and, and I'll pause there and, and ask to what extent you want me to go page by page. Um, can, are there any questions so far? I, I have one actually, I, I don't understand, I guess on uh, page, I think it's the second, just the second page, it's lines one through eight. I am not sure what, what that means. Um, on page two and looking at lines one through eight, um, which starts with uh, division means a major component. No, oh, no, I, it must be it must be a different page then. It's page three, actually. The so it starts with the agency shall in addition yeah. to other law enforcement duties. Right. That, that is simply translating the existing language that creates the Department of Public Safety and adding the word uh, agency. So much of the construct here is taking existing language that's already in statute and pivoting it to the, the agency. Oh, okay, all right. What is your pleasure here, committee members? Should we um, go th start going through it page by page to see what is actually in here? I'm not seeing anybody nod or shake. I think we should. Um, yeah. I would at least like to get into more detail about certain parts of it, particularly the training council, and the, how it's gonna be, how the training will be independent while still being part of the agency, that kind of stuff. I think, you know, we don't have to go through line by line, but I'd like to get into some of those, uh, some of those elements. That's my thought. Yeah, I, th I think you're right. I think we should go through it in a little more detail page by page. Okay. Uh, Happy to, uh, to do that. So starting on uh, page one, uh, the, the definitions again are, are taken from the existing chapters that create the uh, Department of Public Safety and adding um, terminology that's applicable here. So instead of department substituting agency um, and adding uh, secretary in addition to commissioner. Uh, and that flows all the way to page two. Um, I should also say from the outset, as we get into some of the uh, nuances, uh, I skipped over this part of my notes, that there are areas that uh, we are clear need additional um, legislative input and polish. Um, and one that Senator Polina flagged, um, the, that separation that we keep describing. I, I think we've done some work on the separation between whether it's the 911 board and the operations of the 911 system and the council and the operations of the academy, but that's not 
it, it's not fully polished yet. It's it, there, there is more work to be done. So before I forget to mention that. Can I ask a question specifically? Yep. About that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Commissioner, we, we heard from you that um, they would remain independent, but I'm seeing here that now the secretary would be appointing the director of the Criminal Justice Council. I don't, I don't remember us discussing that. Yeah, that was drafted in here as uh, primarily as a placeholder, and it mirrors the way that uh, other agencies operate. However, um, we had a Criminal Justice Council meeting earlier today, and it's the pleasure of the council, and I think you may hear uh, later from both the chair and or interim executive director that that be altered to have the council playing a more prominent uh, role in that appointment. So um, th th I wouldn't look at this as... Uh, a, a rigid uh, document. It's uh, some of the areas are placeholders based on existing uh, language that's in other agency uh, structures. Thanks. Yeah, I think that um, if we can walk through this and raise those kinds of questions where we have uh, concerns and flag them. And then hopefully um, before our next um, session, which will be next week, <clears throat> Commissioner, you and Amarin can work together to actually put this in uh, the kind of format we're used to, more used to seeing. And we can Certainly. go, and we can go oh, through it and start um, really picking it apart. Senator White? Yes. So this is Representative Higley. Uh, just wondering, the document that I'm looking at doesn't have page numbers. So how are we going to follow along? Can we I, stay consistent with the uh, other numbers? I, I think, um, Mark, that you are look probably looking at one that's in the email. If you look at what's pub, I don't know what's on your website, but if you go to Senate Government Operations, um, website and go to today's and go to documents. Okay, thanks. That should, that should have it. Thanks. Um, I had a quick follow up. This is um, Representative Vihovsky on Senator Rahm's question around the independence of the Criminal Justice Council. It also looks like in here that the budget comes under the purview of the Agency of Public Safety. I'm wondering if that is something that also um, has been weighed in on by the Criminal Justice Council just in terms of, of full independence? Uh, if that was discussed, I would defer to the chair. I had to come over to uh, House Government Operations during the council meeting today. So if that was part of the discussion, I missed it. Um, that piece is intentional um, in the design um, uh, in large part so that uh, the, the academy would benefit from the larger budgetary uh, implications of the agency. Basically be part of a much larger uh, budget, which we see as an advantage. So for example, if the academy needed a half a million dollar infusion uh, for investment in something, a half a million dollars set against 120 or 130 million is quite different than half a million dollars set against a $2 million budget. That's understandable, and I can certainly see that view. I think my, I, and I'm wondering, you know, just when you start have to start asking for money, that does take away some of your independence. So if the Criminal Justice Council budget is having to ask the larger agency for money, would you agree that that impacts their ability to be truly independent? Yes, it uh, it, it would have that uh, that side effect, but the, the hope would be that it, if we craft this correctly relative to the independence of the council and the council chair, that they would be able to act independent of, uh, of the governor's budget, as you're seeing, um, I think at least in, in limited fashion now with the uh, Academy advocating for um, some additional resources that weren't originally contemplated in the, in the governor's recommend. Great, thank you. So we are on, um, for those with page numbers, uh, at the, it's two of 68 at the top. Uh, the next section, 6002, is, is the agency creation section. This largely mirrors the creation of the uh, Department of Public Safety. So much of the language is taken from there. And I think there's been some added uh, language at the end um, that uh, 
more, it creates some more modern language around reforming law enforcement, standardizing training, policy adoption, implementation, data, technology, innovation, things of that nature that uh, aren't part of the legacy um, language from the uh, Department of Public Safety. The top of page three, Senator White asked this question early on. This is memorializing language that's already in existence that creates the uh, Department of Public Safety, and that flows uh, through the entirety of page three and into page four. And I don't believe there are any alterations to the various councils and boards that have the support of the um, of the agency. You'll note that the Criminal Justice Council is missing here, and again, that's because of the iterative nature of the way the bill is designed. So. Um, right out of the gate with the creation of the agency. It's not listed there, but then um, later on in a future version, uh, it is noted there. Um, um, Commissioner? Uh, yes, um, go ahead. I'm just curious. I don't see the Department of Motor Vehicles anywhere here. Not yet. Uh, again, the if there's a confusing piece of the, of the structure that uh, we adopted from a prior bill, um, it is that this is the initial um, version. And then as we go through the 68 pages, there are new versions that emerge um, on timelines. So, uh, you know, the, the DMV component doesn't come in until uh, the 1st of July of 2022. So it, it, it gets added in a later uh, paragraph. Okay, thank you. Madam Chair, may I ask a yep. question? So yes. as we go through this next section, there is a piece, I think on page four, that says all of these named uh, now commissions are advisory to the commissioner. And I believe that's now including law enforcement advisory, some, some commissions that are supposed to be doing independent investigation into use of force. As you walk through this particular section, can you talk about how you can have independent investigation and then have it be advisory? Uh, I, I understand your concern. I don't. I, I don't think we've taken anything that. Um, it, it, in this section, it's it's about administrative support uh, at the bottom of page three, and then uh, ad, all of these boards also have um, advisory capacity unless they they have powers and duties um, that are set in statute, and so it's. It's coupling two things together. And I understand how that can, that may look a little bit funny, um, but it's, uh, that's the way the um, agency and department structures are created in statute. So it's just mirroring that. I don't know if I said that clearly. There's an advisory component to them, but there's also language here that indicates that if they have statutory authority that, that, that they maintain that. So for example, the licensing of, uh, uh, electricians, they have statutory authority to do that. The electricians licensing board could be advisory. Uh, candidly, they haven't had to advise me of anything in the last 14 months that I've been here, but they could be advisory to the commissioner on something, but they maintain their statutory independence uh, to function uh, independent of the commissioner or the secretary if the agency were to come to fruition. And I, I would just- Can I follow up on that question? Yes, please. Uh, I, that's not what this language says. Well, I, I, I... Ex except as here and after provided the powers and duties of the board's commissions, including administrative policy making regulatory functions, um, shall, shall be vested in the secretary of the agency. That is that is the current structure, um, as I understand it, of all of these. It, it's it would just say commissioner instead of secretary of the agency. That's that's the standard construct for uh, the creation of either an agency or uh, a department. Um, it, and if, if it that's- Maybe a standard construct, but it, it strips the independence of any board or commission. I, I don't think that it does, uh, only in that it, it, here and after provided, when we get further down in the 68 pages, there is language that very specifically calls out the, uh, um, the maintenance of those statutory functions. 
And if there's language to be changed here in 6003 to ensure that we're not in, inadvertently breaking something, absolutely, uh, we should include it there as well. So I, if I can suggest that, um, that there will be changes to the language, I can guarantee that. Um, so what I would hope that we're doing is looking at the intent of this and how it's done. And once Amarin gets her hands on this, um, th there, I believe there probably will be a lot of clarification and maybe the, um, because it was used to, because it was, um, there were a couple different things, an old bill and the standard construct for agencies. And then this new thing plopped on top of it, if that makes sense, that it, um, <clears throat> I, I think it's somewhat confusing here and that here and after, I think that that can be clarified so that, but if we can get to the intent, so if the intent is to not, is to make sure that those commissions and boards maintain their statutory independence, then I think that we, we make a note of that, that that's the intent here and not get into the exact language at this point. Does that, is, does that make sense? Because I think if we start looking at the exact language as opposed to the intent, then we're going to get so caught up here that we will probably get through page six before we're done today. And um, so what I'd like to do is just look at what the intent is and then have Amarin um, work her magic and make it clear to us. And then, then, we'll, start, then we'll start nitpicking with words. Is that, does that make sense to everybody? And I see some shakes or nods or whatever. No. Okay. All right. So do you want to continue here? Uh, at your discretion, Madam Chair, I'm happy to. Um, okay. The, uh, I'm now at the uh, bottom of page four in personnel uh, designation. Um, this is, an, uh, again, a standard area where uh, certain types of positions are designated as exempt while all others are uh, designated as classified service. On page five, uh, this section um, creates the um, agency under the direction of the secretary. Um, again, um, stock, uh, I've not been through this before. So to the extent I'm referring to this as uh, the stock language, it's that's how it's been uh, represented to me by uh, a variety of legal staff who are working on this. So um, the uh, um, this component uh, creates the uh, the the secretary and um, lays out the duties of the secretary. Um, same with budget. Um, then on the top of page six, creating the position of deputy secretary, again, a standard component of an agency structure, uh, gives the 6024 on page six, line 11, gives the secretary with the approval of the, the governor, the uh, ability to create advisory councils, another um, relatively standard piece of, uh, of language. Um, the next section 6025 um, allows for the transfer of uh, components within the agency. Similar language exists relative to the operations of the department now. Here is where there has been very, uh, some very um, mindful language added in line 19, notwithstanding the section above. Members from different divisions of the Department of Law Enforcement shall not be reassigned or transferred outside their division unless the member requests the transfer and the commissioner approves. Uh, that's designed to um, mitigate uh, historic fears that uh, these kinds of efforts were to simply create one large law enforcement organization under the division of state police. And as, as we've indicated, that is not the intent here. So there's language to memorialize that that's been added. Um, budgetary control is subsection C, page uh, seven, line three. 
and then it gets into multiple pages around the duties of commissioners and directors. And again, this is all language that comes from the Department of Public Safety and is, as I understand it, largely mirrored in the construction of other uh, components of state government. Uh, 6053, line five of page eight. This is language that exists in the Department of Public Safety around changing ranks and grades of uh, members of the organization. This is specific to the, uh, to the state police. And in this area, we've also added the language in again that I read to you earlier uh, about prohibiting the reassignment or transfer outside of a member of a division within the Department of Law Enforcement unless that member requests a transfer and the commissioner approves it. It may be redundant, but um, because uh, as Representative Gannon noted above with some language that then gets modified later on um, in places where we catch that, we're, we're trying to reiterate the language for clarity. Then uh, the remainder of that section is all um, pretty standard until you get to page nine, line 12, number nine. Uh, divisions within the Department of Law Enforcement may not be abolished or transferred. Again, trying to galvanize that. Um, at least initially, or there, well, not initially, but within uh, 18 months or so of the, the formation of the agency, should the uh, General Assembly agree, um, there will be two components of the Department of Law Enforcement, and they're not to be uh, melded together without the General Assembly um, weighing in and doing that via statute. The 6054 on page 9, uh, line 15. Uh, outlines the duties of directors. Again, that is, uh, directors are a standard piece of the construct of um, both agencies and departments in state government, and that's the, uh, the language that goes with the creation of director's positions. Um, by way of background, uh, right now in a, in a department, the, the directors are the, uh, Colonel Birmingham is a director, Director DeRocher and Fire Safety Director Borneman. Uh, in emergency management, Director Conti in the lab, and Director uh, Hollenbeck in administration. Just to give you the context of difference between commissioner and, uh, and director. Uh, the Department of Fire Safety and Emergency Management begins on page 10, line nine, section 6082. This is the formal creation of the department rather than uh, two separate divisions which are created within the Department of Public Safety right now. Um, and then uh, immediately following that, the creation of the Division of Support Services and the assignment of certain tasks to the Division of Support Services that are outlined through page 11. And then beginning at, I, I should pause, I, we've just done like, eight pages, so I'll pause there just in case um, there are comments or to make sure my audio is still working. Are all the directors at this point of the same pay grade or relative? Relative, yes, uh, uh, based on a couple different factors, size of the division it, uh, impacts that and uh, time in service, of course. Any other questions up to this point? Can I, sorry, this is Representative Lefebvre, can I please go back to page nine, section nine? Um, so you said that the within the Department of Law Enforcement may not be abolished or transferred. Um, you said unless it was brought up by legislation. So are you referring back to DMV and such, or is that something else that I had missed? Like, are you yes. saying that that could be eventually done through legislation? Yes, yeah, so that's exactly right. The, the Department of Law Enforcement's created, and then initially two divisions are placed in there, the Division of State Police and the Division of Motor Vehicle Enforcement. And in the future, there's, uh, you know, th this is setting the stage for the contemplation of adding other components like the warden service or liquor and lottery enforcement. Um, what this is memorializing is that once that division's created, 
uh, in this case, the two that would exist in the agency to, to start with or by 2022, um, that they cannot be ab abolished or transferred without a change in the law. So the secretary can't just say, all right, we're, we're done having multiple divisions in the Department of Law Enforcement. We're just going to have one big state police and we're going to squish everybody together. Thank you. I don't see anybody else right now. So I guess you can move on. So here is where we're at the uh, bo very bottom of page 11, very top of page 12. This is where the creation of the agency 6002 gets modified for the first time. So added to that language um, is uh, following the words operational support for the Criminal Justice Training Council is added at that point. Uh, so that, that that goes to the redundancy of the language um, in this iterative process. Uh, I imagine that could be addressed in a different way by taking a single version of 6002 and just creating mm -hmm. a, a subsection that's effective on a particular date rather than having uh, the language repeat. But again, the the, uh, the outline for this was taken from a prior piece of, uh, of legislation. So trying to be consistent. Madam Chair. Yes. I, it could just be habit, but Commissioner, when you say Criminal Justice Training Council, it always makes me think that we're starting to look at the distinction between the training functions for the Police Academy and the Criminal Justice Council. But are you just referring to the Criminal Justice Council? There is only one council, thank you. Uh, it's just 30 years of, of referring yeah. to it that way and it takes a little while to, uh, I think I got it about 80% of the time, but I'm still tripping over the training word about 20% of the time. So is then that training piece related to the police academy, should we have seen that already or is that further down? The Criminal Justice Council is now responsible for both training and professional standards. And uh, I believe the intent uh, of the change made uh, last year by the legislature was to, to clearly uh, articulate that that, um, that professional standards component was uh, not um, in any way sublimated to the training component. So that, that's why training was removed. I'm, I'm extrapolating that, but that's, that's my understanding. Okay. So were we supposed to see the police academy somewhere already? No, and that's a good question as well. Um, and I would ask uh, at whatever point is appropriate um, for both Director Sheets and the Council Chair Sorrell to uh, potentially address any suggestions uh, for how to better memorialize the difference between the operations of the Academy and the Criminal Justice Council itself. That is an area of weakness in the draft that will need to be addressed. Um, it's just that that language doesn't exist anywhere yet. So there wasn't anything to work from. So it, it is an area where I think we've got to do some, um, some additional work. I, I would suggest again that um, I, I think there are a lot of changes to the format. The, the way I am looking at this, um, I, I would change a lot of this format um, and and I think that there will be additions to the language. And um, so what I would recommend on this particular issue is that um, Mr. Sheets and Mr. Sorrell work with um, you, Commissioner and Ameren to come up with the, lang the best language to put in here for that differentiation. Does that, does that make sense to do it that way? Because I, I don't think if we start doing it now and trying to pick at words, we're going to be lost. If they can come up with some language for us to then look at. Can I get the two bills to either shake or nod? Yes, they're, I, they're not good idea. Good idea. Okay. Otherwise, wordsmithing will eat us up with time. Right. OK, they're nodding. So, OK. So we are now on, uh, unfortunately, only page 13, section 6003 in the advisory capacity section 
uh, that Representative Gannon flagged uh, earlier um, with some ambiguity and uh, as having ambiguity and uh, added here on line 14 is uh, at least preliminary language that attempts to uh, clearly uh, delineate the Criminal Justice Council retaining uh, and exercising all powers and functions given to it um, that are administrative in nature, including the power to develop training, training delivery methodology, administering professional standard, standards, um, conduct investigations and hearings, uh, and adjudicating officer conduct, uh, et cetera. So th that is, again, language that will need to be tweaked. Um, that was written uh, to address the, the goals of the legislation. So it's, uh, it's probably not perfect yet, but it's, it's there as a placeholder to try to address all the various components. Okay. Madam Chair, I feel like I have some, something that one could construe as wordsmithing, but the Council Advisory Committee is named as a separate item than the Criminal Justice Council. I imagine it advises the Criminal Justice Council and then it's not mentioned as needing to be independent as well. So it's seen as kind of co-equal above, but then not named down below. Um, I'm not sure I understood that because I think the that is part of the of the council. I, Madam Chair, I've not had any experience with the council advisory committee since I arrived at public safety. So I have um, there, there have been conversations about whether to suggest it continue or be removed, and I defer um, those again to the the chair of the council and the and the executive director as to whether, and then ultimately to 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 the committees on whether it makes sense to keep that parallel structure or not. So Bill Sorrell, did you have want to respond to that? Uh, Madam muted. Chair, I, I could respond if it's okay. Yep, since he's for, muted. Okay, for the record, this is Bill Sheets. Uh, Senator, great question. The Council Advisory Committee was a governor appointee committee and all of those uh, appointees expired 2019 and they never had a meeting. We have since uh, talked about replacing that and would love the opportunity to introduce replacement language in this bill that formally recognizes the professional regulation subcommittee that is a subset of the council that handles professional regulation as was intended by this uh, Council Advisory Committee. Thank you. And if I may just add my sense at one point was that was where a lot of lay people, civilians, particularly BIPOC and other marginalized folks were going to be. So it's, it's not semantics. It's really important, I think, that we know where that co advisory committee lives and, and what its function is and who it reports to. Yeah, uh, Senator, it's critically important to us too in that uh, Every, that uh, committee, subcommittee that we currently have in place is well represented and uh, doing a tremendous job. So we, uh, in some communications over the weekend, uh, articulated to the commissioner and to uh, the governor's legal counsel that uh, although it appears on the governor's website that the advisory uh, committee uh, exists, that as the executive director said, the, their terms all ran in 19, they hadn't met. And in the interim, S-124 was enacted and the authority to be the funnel recipient of allegations or reports of officer misconduct around the state was to come to the council and we created this uh, professional regulation uh, subcommittee, which is the only subcommittee. It's five members, both law enforcement and some of the outside uh, uh, members of the council. Uh, their meetings are confidential. The only ones of our subcommittee meetings that are not open to the public or to other council members, including uh, uh, myself. So we didn't see the need to continue in statute the existence of a, an advisory committee uh, looking at the legislative language on the reason for the creation of that advisory committee. We saw the creation or the, the creation of the new 
Criminal Justice Council as being a manifestation of that same legislative intent and believe that the references in statute to a, an advisory committee to the council could be removed. And, and uh, what the legislature has been looking to accomplish with that is to have some outsiders see what allegations of misconduct there are and what's being done about it uh, are being implemented by uh, the, the council's operations. I'm not sure what draft you have in front of you. I'll need to, tomorrow to find that to deal apples and apples. Uh, but I believe there is some language in the draft that specifically authorizes the council to create new subcommittees, which we have committed, I think, at least five new subcommittees, but with an express reference to the professional regulation subcommittee. Thank you. Okay. Um, do we want to move on then? Are we ready to go to the next page? Page 14, Madam Chair, um, yep. begins uh, more of that iterative process of adding uh, the Criminal Justice Council to various sections. Um, and important here will be, uh, as uh, Ledge Council is uh, reviewing this, and then ultimately you are, uh, to make sure that uh, the intent remains uh, clear and that uh, there isn't any inadvertent breakage uh, of any of the intent as we move forward. Um, I, I, you know, the way I'm looking at this is I'm um, thinking about um, reporting this on the floor. And the way it's written, it would be impossible for me to report this on the floor in a coherent manner. So I think that as we go through this, we'll, um, we'll get it much more streamlined and um, understandable and um, easier to report on the floor because I, I would not want to try to report this one on the floor, believe me. It Thank is you. Hard, it's hard enough to walk through it with, uh, with you in a controlled setting like this. So yep. I, I, con I concur. Uh, the top of page 15 is an area that uh, will need edits to uh, uh, comport with the council's um, discussion from earlier today uh, about appointment of the director. And I think there's a number of different possibilities there. Um, so I, I just flagged that one for further uh, exploration in terms of how that should flow. Mm -hmm. um, there are then a number of sections where uh, there are administrative changes being made, uh, simply swapping out the Secretary of Public Safety for the Commissioner of Public Safety. And those go on for a couple of pages until we get to page 18. Um, uh, this also is around, uh, top of page 18, section 2355 is also around the selection of the executive director and uh, that language would have to flow together with uh, uh, the prior section that I flagged. So again, a placeholder for that process that uh, would need to be galvanized moving forward. Um, based on a variety of feedback. Um, the budgeting section that's been uh, flagged already, the director uh, submitting a budget to the secretary, that's a, a normal um, course of business within uh, an agency or department. Uh, whether or not we wanna flag that the council with its independence may make arguments, uh, uh, budgetary arguments, I'd leave of course at your discretion. Um, some uh, moving into the end of page 18, top of page 19, the uh, a couple more just language changes and then administrative changes uh, around uh, financial assets and liabilities, just shifting those to the to the department. Um, there are also uh, just as a side note, I think there are assets that are uh, part of um, buildings and general services and 
there's no language that contemplates moving them to the agency. So if those relationships exist, if PGS owns a building that the academy utilizes, they would continue to own it and um, we would continue to pay fee, fee for space uh, as necessary. So if there's no need to, base, yeah, the basic uh, version of that is if there's no need to move it, it, the language doesn't move it. Then on page 20, we begin the third iteration of the creation of the agency with the 911 board uh, moving and the Department of Law Enforcement uh, now having down on line 18, the Division of Motor Vehicle Enforcement. And the following sections again are uh, repetitive and this is probably an area where they could be collapsed together yeah. uh, in some fashion. Yeah, I think they they probably, well, my drafting style, they would be, but. The top of page 24, I'll flag as um, uh, another area where the board is advising the secretary on the selection of the executive director of the 911 uh, board. So um, again, there may be alterations that you want to make there, I don't think we're wedded to any particular uh, mechanism. There are a variety of them that are used throughout state government for the selection of uh, the executive directors of uh, various either independent or semi-independent uh, components. We had a number of them in the Agency of Commerce as well. I am just skimming through and skipping pages. I'm through page 25 and into page 26 and another set of administrative sections about assets and liabilities and equipment being <coughs> transferred. Again, if, it's, if it is in the purview of another component of state government or it's rental property or something of that nature, there's, there's just an adoption of whatever that relationship is without a transfer occurring. The top of page 26, uh, section eight, title 23, uh, administration and enforcement of title um, spells out that uh, a memorandum of understanding um, to carry out uh, duties it, uh, should be created. And there is already some language. This just modifies it to acknowledge the, the altered nature of the relationship. Uh, there, but you'll see in the strikeouts that there are there are already such provisions, um, similar provisions that are in place uh, relative to the cooperation between the Department of uh, Public Safety and the Department of Motor Vehicles. Uh, Madam Chair, may I ask a question? Go ahead. So, Michael, do you envision it's Allison? Do you envision having the same MOU as you would? As, as we go down this road with fish and wildlife and liquor and lottery? I would think that would be necessary un unless specifically memorialized in statute, the um, memorializing the relationships to ensure that the support of the non-law enforcement functions in those departments or divisions remains uninterrupted is critical. Thanks. Madam Chair, can I ask a question? Yes, please. Um, Commissioner, I brought this up before early on in testimony days before. Um, is there any assurance here you can give for um, our driver's privilege card community that a more deeper merging of motor vehicles and the rest of public safety won't result in some kind of additional oversight of their identity and immigration status? I can. Uh... It, it actually could create the opposite because we're decoupling the enforcement uh, components of motor vehicles from the Department of Motor Vehicles that issues those cards and coupling them to the Department of Public Safety, which doesn't have any responsibility for the issuance uh, or maintenance of those cards. Okay, I'm processing that. But... Sorry, that I, I can take another run at it if you want. You can keep, sorry, I don't want to hold us up. I'm just looking at the language and thinking about it. It, it, it the, the short like answer is, it sounds is like I it's can, an improvement. 
It, yeah, that, that's exactly right. Uh, the short answer is I, I would see it as to the extent an improvement is, it, I'm not sure one's necessary because I think we've got a good balance now, um, but it's not a threat. Um, so I can assure you of that. Okay. There is a, uh, a section at the top of page 27 um, that's administrative in nature, switching department to agency relative to automatic license plate readers. Um, we may actually want to have a conversation about just removing this statute altogether uh, to shorten this up uh, in large part because there's only one automated license plate reader left in use in Vermont. Um, and we're main, we we're actually about to sunset um, the, uh, the maintenance of the, the storage there and take that unit out of service. It's not our unit, but um, uh, we're, uh, we're the organization that pays to have uh, those things archived. And it's just, it, under the existing operating rubric that's been established in Vermont, they're basically not, they're, they're not useful items anymore. So uh, I think we may come back and just suggest strike this all out and we just won't use the, that device going forward in Vermont. that could knock off a page and a half. So that would be helpful. <laughs> well, I've already knocked off about 15. Yes, ag agreed. Um, they don't let me draft these things. So <laughs> I'm with you, Senator. Uh, the a more administrative work, top of page uh, 30, um, to transfer the en enforcement staff, the financial assets and liabilities again. Um, same uh, descriptors that I gave above for the other uh, components apply to this third component as well. Top of page 32, we begin just administrative changes, uh, changing department to agency and commissioner to secretary. That continues through page 33, through into page 34. Uh, you'll see one strikeout uh, direct on page 34, line six, director of the Vermont Criminal Justice Services Division is a division that has not existed in the Department of Public Safety for several years. So that's an administrative cleanup unrelated to the agency structure. A uh, uh, question. Yep. Why does it feel though like a, it, it seems like it's saying that the, the criminal what will be the criminal justice voice on the law enforcement advisory panel then? I'm just looking um, at speak before we leave that. Yeah, for, for clarity, the, the, the criminal justice services division was a division of the Department of Public Safety that had the radio technology services unit, the Vermont Crime Information Center, and the information technology uh, unit prior to the creation of the Agency of Digital Services. So it was actually a poorly named division. It was, it's just, it, it's administrative. It doesn't really have anything to do with what the title suggests. I, I think that, uh, Senator Rahm, I think that the council is not, was never does not have membership on the LEAB, I don't, believe um this was no. changed this the two the council and the leab board were changed last year the makeup of both of them or maybe the leab board wasn't i thought we already got rid of that position but i don't think that the council has membership on the on the leab board and if that's something that should happen then we could look at that, but this is current makeup. Yeah, I mean, it, it. aside from the strikeout kind of bringing it to my attention, I was just looking through the list and feeling like there's not a kind of civilian or criminal justice voice on that very important um, commission. So maybe I'm, I'm not understanding properly what they do and if a civilian oversight voice would be helpful, but that's where my mind is going and I'll just, that's my end of my questions there. Okay. We can talk more about that. So
so I'm just going to name pages where there's administrative cleanup uh, around agency department, secretary, commissioner, and when we get to a section that uh, is not administrative cleanup, I'll stop. So 35, 36, page 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, top of page 44, there is, uh, uh, I've forgotten now, I think it was Senator Clarkson asked uh, about a future memoranda of understanding and that's actually called out top of page 44, line one. Uh, additional cleanup continues through page 45, um, some ad administrative uh, cleanup um, in the middle of page 45 that speaks to the state's emergency management plan. And I'd have to find the background to how that ended up in there, but I know it's uh, it's administrative cleanup, but I, I don't know the backstory for for that uh, particular piece. There were a lot of folks involved in the drafting here. Top of page 46. Um, this is existing um, language, but there's been some clarifications added uh, for certified law enforcement officers assigned to the Department of Law Enforcement, where previously the only uh, law enforcement folks in the department were the state police. So um, while it's not just a straight substitution of secretary for uh, commissioner or agency for department, uh, it relates to that level of administrative cleanup. Same with page 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53. We may be, we may be done with uh, substantive changes through page 54. Uh, no, there's reporting. I knew there was something else in here. Um, end of page 55, line 19, uh, reporting. Um, re uh, and I hesitate to use the word reporting because there have been so many reports, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, creating um, some kind of report on uh, potential uh, addition, any additional legislative changes needed to continue the orderly and efficient organization of the transition. While we can anticipate probably 80 or 90% uh, in the bill structure that we'll work through with you over the next uh, uh, foreseeable future, there invariably we're going to miss something. So it calls out the need to report back on anything that we have missed. Um, and then an additional report about the feasibility of transferring other law enforcement assets into the agency and exploration of some VOSHA components as well that have been talked about previously uh, and reporting on the efficacy of doing that. And then one more report on uh, two versions of the report, uh, the 21st of November, excuse me, November of 2021 and November of 2022, after the various components, um, if they were to move, uh, there are two reports due back to the governor and the General Assembly on uh, any additional work that needs to be done in the wake of those. Then uh, page uh, 57 makes alterations to the governor's uh, cabinet pursuant to the change to secretary from commissioner of public safety. And then some additional um, transitional provisions which are uh, language related to making other statutory alterations and page 58, we are into emergency management language and cleanup around um, emergency management and fire safety that goes through the end of the document, I believe. And this is, again, just 
agency secretary uh, replacements and things of that nature. There are there's no intention for substantive alteration there. And then effective dates. Um, the draft is uh, July 1 for the operations of the Academy for 2021 and July 1 uh, of 2022 um, for the 911 operations and DMV enforcement. And that's just the draft. Okay, um, where are we? Committees? Um, does anybody have any? Uh, question I, I I do believe that there's um uh, I, I might be wrong but I do think that there there are um, ways of of um, formatting it that will do like all of the last pages and all the pages where just commissioner was substituted with secretary and stuff clearly we have to have those in the statutes, but in the creation of the agency itself, I think there's um, a more efficient way of of drafting it. But I may I may be wrong, but we can talk about that. But in terms of the the um, intent of it, are there any technical questions about the intent of it and um, Madam Chair, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm holding back because I've been asking yep. a lot of questions. Um, as, as I sort of take this all in, you know, in the middle of a pandemic, I feel like one of the reasons people might think we're doing this is so that there can be more streamlined emergency communications, emergency operations, you know, ways of consolidating our response to disasters and pandemics, et cetera. That doesn't seem to sort of show up in many places here. It, Commissioner, would you, I, I just feel like that's probably why people would think we're, we're talking about public safety so much right now in some ways. Um, do you see any place to sort of strengthen the line of um, communication or chain of command around emergencies and disasters? It would, uh, it's a great question. It would do that by design. You know, unfortunately, in the 68 pages, it is all administrivia about the creation and structure of state government, which is sort of inside baseball to that, but uh, an outgrowth of the agency that has been flagged in reports since I was a toddler, um, all indicate uh, better service delivery, more streamlined delivery of emergency operations, um, better sharing of assets, better sharing of facilities, um, more uh, more mindful uh, delivery of services to Vermonters uh, instead of, and th these reports don't exist exclusively in public safety. When I was in, um, in commerce, we had, we only went back three years. We had 120, 143 reports that related to the delivery of, uh, uh, of economic services to Vermonters and housing um, and tourism and marketing. And that was only in a three year window. And the themes are similar. The fragmentation with which the state government has organically grown up create inefficiencies and, and lost opportunities to deliver service. And um, despite the fact that we have great folks in all of the various divisions and, and operating elements we're talking about combining, um, having them together would produce an even better product than we're able to produce now. Does that answer your question somewhat, Senator Rahm? It kind of does. Do you, does, I was looking through all the names of the commissioners and the titles and the departments and does, does, do we just stand up emergency operation centers and kind of response teams in an in emergency or do you have a standing emergency response and recovery wing of your, of your we Oh, we, yeah. I, okay, go ahead, Commissioner. I think it's there. Okay, I didn't see it. It, it is in there. Uh, the, the state has an emergency operations plan and a division of emergency management that organizes all of the state's assets um, relative to emergencies, whether it's Hurricane Irene or a, a smaller scale flood, or it is um, 
the uh, the COVID response. Um, Health Operations is a branch of the state's emergency operations center. Um, because this is a health emergency, you have the, the size of that branch sort of dwarfs everything else uh, that's going on relative to the emergency response. So it's, uh, it's an unusual uh, look for a, a long-term emergency, but that same structure is used um, for all emergencies that we face uh, in Vermont. And it takes, uh, it utilizes the assets of state government and all of our partner organizations, municipalities, uh, counties, uh, all the emergency assets, emergency managers from around Vermont, um, it aggregates them together regardless of what um, organization they're assigned to, whether it's inside state government or outside. So while there are efficiencies that'll happen in that level emergency response with having a more unified uh, agency of public safety, um, it, that's a fragmentary um, improvement because of the nature of the way we run emergency operations already. And there are, there are some issues around emergency management um, that we will be taking up after. Um, it, it's not issues with them, but it's just some potential changes um, that we will be taking up after crossover, but it really has nothing to, no bearing on this, on this um, bill or this creation of this agency. And I, I will say that, um, one of the uh, kind of ironies of Irene was that um, our emergency operations center was flooded and could not be used as an emergency operations center. And this time around, uh, the inability to have people in one room has prevented us from using the emergency operations center. So we were the first <laughs> in the country to go completely remote for operations of our EOC that has now been in continuous use for almost a, it'll be a year on March 11th. The prior record for emergency operations is 17 days to give you a sense of what uh, the difference in scale is. I'm looking around to see if there are any more clarifying questions and I, if I'm sure that people have a lot of um, opinions and uh, things they would like clarified in the, and I'm sure that, and we'll get to all of those, but um, right now, does anybody have, um, Mark, are you, Representative Higley? Yes, if I could, uh, Senator, uh, how do you see this playing out in the sense of um, Ameren, uh, putting things more in a form that we're familiar with? And, and are you assuming and making sure that both the Senate and the House have the same drafts to look at? That's, that would be a concern to me. Well, I, the way I see this playing out is that if it's going to be a bill, one of us has to start the bill. So that, and we, uh, Representative Copeland Hanses and I have talked about this and we, we, will, we can start this on our side so we'll deal with the, the first draft and make changes. And um, by the time it gets to you, it will be um, a combination of Ameren's draft, our changes, um, testimony from different uh, stakeholders and groups. So you, while you can have the, the original draft that she comes up with that we deal with, that will not be the final draft. The final bill. Okay, Does again, because there's no pro. Again, there's no prohibition on the Senate and the House having the same draft and going through the same process. So, I, I just hope that uh, we can either have more joint hearings uh, to, you know, uh, be time sensitive, uh, because I'd hate to see at the end of all this, um, you know, a very late bill coming out from the Senate and the House not having enough time to act on, on what's necessary. So that, that's my concern is, um, again, I'd like to see this move along. Again, no prohibition on same bills being in the House and Senate. No, I, I agree with you. And the draft, the same bill could probably be there, but um, I, and I may be wrong on this, but I feel that if we wanna have real um, debate and, 
constructive, um, thoughtful discussion on this, that having 17 people be involved in it, plus all the um, witnesses is, is too, um, does not allow for um, meaningful discussion. And, and so what I would anticipate is that we would take a draft and we would start working on that. And we can keep, we can keep your committee in the loop on every step that we take, but a bill will has to come from one side to the other side. That's just the way our process works. It, it can't be a bill that's passed by, by both at the same time. So, but that, that, does that make sense? And um, uh, Representative Copeland Hanses and I try to talk with each other every Wednesday. And so we will make sure that um, you are, I mean, we don't have any Wednesdays left actually. So if we're gonna do this, we're going to have to do it. And we will make sure that you're kept um, up to speed with every change that's made. So you won't be surprised by anything. Okay, thank you. I don't know if that answered that satisfactory or not, but you're very gracious to say thank you. <laughs> thank you. Representative Colston Colston has his hand up. Who does? Thank you. Representative Go ahead, Colston Hal. Here. Oh, okay. There you are. Uh, thank you. Um, I just I have a comment slash question to offer, and I want to build off of what Senator Rahm was sharing. Um, I'm, I'm reminded of results-based accountability. And, and one of the questions is to the effect of how are we better off from this effort? So I, I hope that as this gets rewritten and, and, and put together, for me, that what, that's, that's what's missing. You know, how are we better off for this effort? And um, if that can be made clear, I think it'll be easier to, to move forward. Yeah, I think you're right. You're right. And I think that we can um, hopefully um, my, my position is, and I don't know about anybody else, but my position is that we will be better off and I could list some reasons why, but I think it needs to be clear to everybody about how, how we will be better off. Anybody else I see, I don't see any hands going up. Representative LeClaire, you're being very quiet. I'm just listening to you, Madam Chair, with all your wisdom. With rapt attention, I know. <laughs> um, anybody else? Madam Chair, can I just? Uh, yes, yes, please. I, I am concerned that this bill um, doesn't address a lot of the funding issues with, you know, like the E91 board. I mean, there's nothing in here to address that. Um, and some of the underfunding issues. And, you know, I would anticipate, given how long the Department of Public Safety has worked on some of this, that, that there would have, those things would have been addressed. Um, in this draft bill, um, because it, it's not like these issues haven't been raised in committee, in reports, um, and I just don't see that here. I, if I I'm, may, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, please. They're not addressed in the bill, uh, Representative Gannon, uh, because the bill is structural uh, to the formation of the agency. We have testified um, and had a, a number of side conversations with legislators around uh, approaches to the 911 um, challenge, uh, in uh, in part, and uh, this is an opportunity to to pitch both committees on um, some additional work in parallel to this. Uh, last year, as part of S124, um, there was a provision that was passed that prohibited us from executing a statute that allows for the billing of dispatch services. We had put forth a plan to phase in over four years uh, fees for agencies that are, reserving, that are receiving dispatch services for free uh, as an um, 
to try to create some parity in the investments that uh, municipalities and, and others make uh, in their emergency communications. Um, those conversations in recent months, uh, starting late summer, I believe, uh, have taken the form of uh, that billing that we were planning to do was not to balance our budget, um, but rather to just create that parity that I was describing. Um, an outgrowth of that, it may be that you could either reinvest those dollars into the 911 operation, um, and that's an advantage to uh, bolting together the operations of the 911 system, our radio technology services group, and the PSAPs themselves that I've described previously. Uh, or another uh, option, uh, it, uh, unrelated to your question, but just for clarity, so I uh, get on the table all the things that we've offered as possibilities. There are um, both county efforts and multi-agency uh, municipal efforts to uh, try to create uh, regional communication centers and upfront funding is one of the challenges there. So one of the options may be to use um, those funding inflows to help uh, it with startup funds for other regional communication efforts, which again are one of those things that's repetitively mentioned over the reports in the last 50 years as a best practice and has been um, only lightly undertaken uh, in Vermont for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is, is funding. So. We very much have contemplated how to solve some of those problems. They're not, those solutions are not contained in the draft legislation because there really isn't a mechanism uh, to do that. These are just structural changes that are in the, in the draft. So I, I, I don't know that that answers your question, Representative Gannon, but I, I do know that I, I don't know how other agencies are structured in our statutes and if they have, if they answer funding questions in the, in the create in the structure of the agency itself, or if those are separate, separate issues that are addressed separately, I would, I would be surprised if the Department of Mental Health, for example, in its the um, statutes that create that create the structure of the Department of Mental Health, talk about the funding for mental health services. That's all I was thinking. Um, but I don't know if that answers your question or not, Representative Gannon. Well, it doesn't, but that's, that's all right. We'll have our opportunity to look at the bill. Mm -hmm. um, anybody else have? Madam Chair. Yes. I just want to say, as I've mentioned too in, in past sessions, just in the Senate, um, you know, I, I want to make sure that if there are people in the public who want to be heard in some way about this, that we all are clear if we're making that possible and if we're doing that together, who other folks have heard from. Um, there was an open docket, obviously, about this, and I am aware of people who wrote into that open docket and had some serious concerns, particularly from affected communities by policing and public safety apparatus. And so, you know, I just want to make sure at some point what one or both of our, our bodies are hearing from those folks as well. I, we will hear from anybody who wants to testify. I think we've always, always tried to do that on, on every bill and, um, so I, I see no difference here that we will listen to people. Anthony, Senator Polina. Sorry about that. I, in a sense, I want to echo what Senator Rahm just said and go back to what Representative Colson said about making sure that um, are, how, are we, how are we going to measure if we're better off or not? And a lot of the conversation about setting up this agency is around efficiency and effectiveness of policing. And I think that's fine. That, that's, that's not that that's a bad thing. And that could help us be better off. But I think there are a lot of people around the state, BIPOC community and others who would, would want us, when they think about how could we be better off, they want to be feel more safe and secure in their communities and know that we're going to have a police that force that is really responsible to the community and responsive to the community. So I think that that's really something that we have to look at really closely as we move. On. To me, that's the most fundamental thing that we have to discuss is 
are we really going to make this a better agency be something that's more effective and more efficient police force, which I'm not saying is bad, but there's a lot of other issues that people see it through different lenses. And I think that we have to make sure that we are building a system that is going to improve our responsiveness to people of color and other in vulnerable communities. Thank you. Anybody else right now? All right, so um, can we um, ask if um, uh, the commissioner and um, Amarin, if we can um, have a, another draft that's, um, uh, I'm not sure how to put this, but um, I guess, um, well, I'll talk to you afterwards, Amarin, because I think that there are some ways of doing this that uh, would be much clearer. Um, and, um, and also making sure that Bill Sheets and Bill um, Sorrell have the language um, that we talked about. Um, anything else that we need to make sure we get in here? And then we'll, next week we'll hear from, we'll start hearing from people who are testifying on on the draft bill itself, if that makes sense. Madam Chair, if I may, um, I think it does make sense. And I've certainly heard some discussion on expediency, but I do think that given a change of this magnitude and where we sit with the questions around public safety and policing, that it might make sense to pursue public hearing on an, on an issue this large. Um. I, I we we could we could do that. Let me um, and Representative Copeland Hanses, we can talk about that. I think that um, the we we would meet. I don't know if how we would do that and have the testimony, the public testimony, be on on the structure or on a myriad of issues out there that aren't aren't part of this structure at all, but are being um, addressed in different different venues and different bills. Um, so I, I don't know how that would work, but we can think we can think about that. Yeah. Senator White. Yeah. That, hello, Representative Maraki. How, how are things up in your end of Putney? <laughs> They're so, fine. Um, <laughs> to pick up on that thread, one of the few things about Zoom that I think are helpful is that it, it does allow us to do things like hold a public hearing so people from all over the state can really have access to us. Um, I think that the time to do it though is after you have a bill ready so people can actually comment on what we're putting forward to mm -hmm. maybe premature to start thinking about a hearing until we actually have a bill and people know what's going to be in it. But I, I would agree that this is something that um, a public a public hearing make makes sense and and the fact that we can do it by zoom makes it a lot easier than it might have been otherwise that's a good a good point um anything else i'm looking around I don't see anybody else um okay thank you for thank you for um Letting us invite you. <laughs> it was a good suggestion to do it together to to kind of go through the the concepts and get an idea of where we're where we might be heading. Thank you, Senator White, for making this uh, meeting available to us today. And if you get to a point where you're ready to do a public hearing, I would love to uh, share with you the tips and tricks that we learned um, in doing our public hearings last August or September. Uh, and then I'd also love for my committee to be able to participate in, in hearing from the public. Oh, I, th I think if we, if we get to that point that it will, it would, should definitely be both committees that, that yeah. do it at the same time. Great. Okay. So thank you everybody.